you've practiced some of the most elegant formalism in computer science, and yet you're the creator of a concept like literate programming, which seems to move closer to natural language type of description of programming. Ab yeah, absolutely. So the, how do you see those two as conflicting as the well, formalism of theory and the idea of literate programming? So there, there we are in a non-uniform system where I don't, where I don't think one, one size fits all, and I don't, uh, and I don't think all truth lies in one, in one kind of expertise. And so somehow, in a way, you'd say my my life is a convex combination of English and mathematics. And you're okay with that? And not only that, I think thriving. I wish you know I want my kids to be that way. I want <laughs> etc. You know. Yeah. I, Use left brain, right brain at the same time. Uh, you got a lot more done. That's that was part of the <laughs> part of the bargain. And I've heard that you didn't really read for pleasure until into your thirties. Yeah, you know, that, literature. That's true. You know more about me than I do, but I, I'll, I'll try to be consistent with what you read. Yeah, no, just believe me. I uh, <laughs> just go with whatever story I tell you. Yeah. It'll be easier that way. The conversation. Will be right. Easier. Yeah. No, that's true. <laughs> So I've, I've heard mention of Philip Roth's American Pastoral, which I, I love as a book. Um, I don't know if I, it was it was mentioned as something I think that was meaningful to you as well. Uh, in either case, what literary books had a lasting impact on you? What literature? Yeah, okay, good, good poetry? question. So, I, so I, I I met Roth. Uh, oh, uh, really? Well, we both got doctorates from Harvard on the same day, so so, okay. so we were. Yeah, we had lunch together and stuff like that. And but he knew that uh, uh, you know computer books would never sell. Well, well. Um, <laughs> all right. So you say you you uh, you uh, you were a teenager when you left Russia. So mm -hmm. uh, I have to say that Tolstoy was one of the big influences on me. Uh, I uh, especially like Anna Karenina, mm -hmm. uh, not because of the, of particular of the plot of the story where she, but because uh, uh the, the, there's this character who you know the, the philosophical discussions that mm -hmm. uh, it, it's all it's a it a whole uh, way of life is worked out there it's among the characters and so and, and so that i thought was uh, was especially beautiful on the other hand dostoevsky i i didn't like at all <laughs> because i've I felt that he, his genius was mostly because he kept forgetting what he what he had started out to do, and he was just sloppy. I I I didn't think that 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 he polished his stuff at all, uh, and and I I tend to admire mm -hmm. somebody who who dots the i's and crosses the t's. So the the music of the prose is what you admire more and than. The, I certainly do admire the music of the language, which I couldn't appreciate in the Russian original, but but I can in Victor Hugo, you know, because mm -hmm. it's close. French is much is closer. But but Tolstoy, I like the same reason I like Herman Wouk as a as a novelist. I th I think uh, uh, he, like his book Marjorie Morningstar has a similar character in who, who who developed his own personal philosophy and expo and and it go, goes in in the was consistent uh, yeah right yeah. It, and it's worth uh, worth pondering uh so uh so you yeah. don't like nietzsche and uh like what you don't like friedrich nietzsche or nietzsche yeah no no yeah this has no, I, I i keep seeing quotations from Nietzsche and and they never tempt me to read any further. <laughs> well, uh, he's full of contradictions, so yeah. you will certainly not appreciate yeah. him. But Schiller, you know, I'm trying to get, get across what I appreciate in literature. Mm -hmm. uh, and part of it is the, it, it is, is, as you say, the music of the language, uh, the way it flows. And take uh, Raymond Chandler versus Dashiell Hammett. Dashiell Hammett's sentences uh, are, are awful, and Raymond Chandler's are, are are beautiful. They just flow. So, I I don't uh, I don't read literature because it's uh, uh, supposed to be good for me, or, or because somebody said it's great. But but it I I, I find things that I like. I mean. Uh, you mentioned you were dressed like James Bond, so mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I love Ian Fleming. I think he's got a, he, he had a really great gift for if he has a golf game or a 
game of bridge or something and this comes into a story it'll it, it'll be the most exciting golf game or 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 you know the absolute best possible hands of bridge that that exists and and uh, and he he exploits it and, and t- tells it beautifully so so <clears throat> in connecting some things here looking at literate programming and being able to it convey uh, encode algorithms to a computer in a way that mimics how humans speak uh, how what do, what do you think about natural language in general and the messiness of our human world about trying to express yeah difficult things so the idea of literate programming is to, is really to try to uh understand something better by seeing it from at least two perspectives, the formal and the informal. If we're trying to understand a complicated thing, if we can look at it in different ways. And so this this is, in fact, the key to technical writing. Uh, mm-hmm. a, a good technical writer, trying not to be obvious about it, but says everything twice, mm-hmm. uh, formally and informally, or, or maybe three times. But you try to give uh, the, the, uh, the reader um, a, a way to to put the concept into his own brain or her own brain. Is that better for the writer or the reader or both? Well, the writer just tries to understand the reader. That's the goal of a writer is to is, is to have a good mental image of the reader and to, to say what the reader expects next and to to impress the reader with what has impressed the writer. <laughs> Uh, 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 why something is interesting. So, so when you have a computer program, we try to, uh, instead of looking at it as something that we're just trying to give an instruction to the computer, what we really want to be is giving giving insight to the person who's, who's uh, uh, going to be maintaining this program or, or to the programmer himself when he's debugging it as to why this stuff is being done. And so all the techniques of exposition that that a teacher uses or a book writer uses make you a better programmer if your if your program is going to be uh, not a, just a one shot deal so <clears throat> how difficult is that do you see hope for the combination of informal and formal for the yeah. programming task yeah i I'm the wrong person to ask, I guess, because I'm a geek. But, but I think for a geek, it's easy. I, well, I, I don't know. Not some people have difficulty writing, and that might be because there's something in their brain structure that make, makes it hard for them to write, or uh, or it might be something just that they haven't had enough practice. I'm not the right one to. To to, uh, to judge, but I don't think you can teach a- any person any particular skill. I, I do think that that writing is is half of my life, and so I, I put it together in lit- literary program. Even when I, even when I'm writing a one shot program, I I write it uh, uh, in literate way uh, because I I get it right faster that way. Now, does it get compiled automatically or? Oh, yeah. So I guess on the technical side, my question was, how difficult is, is it to design a system where much of the programming is done informally? Informally. It's, yeah, informally. I think uh, whatever works to make it understandable is good, uh, but then you have to also understand uh, how informal it is you have to know the limitations you have to you, right. you so so by putting the formal and informal together this this is where this is where it gets locked into your into your brain you can you, you can say informally uh well i'm working on a problem right now so I, let's go there Do, get, let's can you give me an example of um yeah. of connecting the informal and the formal well, it's a little too complicated an example. The, 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 there's a puzzle that, that's self-referential. It's called a Japanese arrow puzzle, and uh, and and you're given a a bunch of boxes. Each one points north, east, south, or west. And at the end, you're supposed to fill in each box with the number of distinct 
numbers that it points to. Mm -hmm. So if I put a three in a box, that means that, and, and it's pointing to five other boxes, that means that there's going to be three different numbers in those five boxes. Mm -hmm. And uh, and those boxes are pointing. One of them might be pointing to me. One of them might be pointing the other the other way. But anyway, I it yeah I I'm supposed to find a, a set of numbers that obeys this this complicated con condition that each number counts how many distinct numbers uh, it, it points to. Well, um, and uh, so a guy sent me his solution to this problem where he where he. Um, uh, 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 presents formal statements that, that that say either this is true or this is true or this is true and, mm -hmm. and 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 so I try to render that formal statement informally and I try to say I contain a three and and uh, the guys I'm pointing to uh, contain the numbers one two and six mm -hmm. so by putting it informally and also I convert it into a into a dialogue statement um, uh, that helps me understand the logical statement that he's written down as a string of numbers in terms of s s some abstract variables that he had.